This is a secret video for those of you that really need this info and are ready to learn it. Language etiquette or culture etiquette is so important when you are communicating in a different language. Usually culture and language go hand by hand. And I want you to have it easy, much easier than I did have it and many years ago when I had to learn English as an adult and I was in a real predicament. I was in social situations and I didn't know how to interact, no longer in terms of the language, because I knew enough to get by and communicate, but the etiquette that is so important and the right etiquette. So to be able to know what to say when and how to use the politeness rules of different cultures is going to open golden doors for you one after another. My name is Beatriz Cutillas Moreno, but you can call me BCM. And as I said, I had to learn English as an adult. It was very tough, but in the process, as a good doctor scientist, I realized of a method, a method that now you can use to become fluent at Spanish. And in this method, I am concentrating on the nitty gritty, exactly what is it that you learn, you need to be able to communicate in Spanish fluently. And I am taking away all the complexity, a lot of things that we really don't know. And also there are things like this one, the etiquette, that are not really taught in any courses. Without further ado, let's start with the lesson today. Ready? Okay, so, first of all, when do we say, por favor? Um, for the purpose of simplicity or for clarity, I am going to exaggerate this explanation, okay? <laughs> So imagine that uh, you are going to, you know, you park somewhere wrong and then you're going to be fine. And then you see like the traffic guardian and then you go, por favor, por favor, no me ponga esa multa, por favor. <laughs> okay. So similarly to in English, when it's sort of begging or really asking for something not to happen, we do say, por favor. Okay, so the equivalent will be like, please, 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 don't give me a fine. Yes, so in Spanish will be like, por favor, do, no me pongas esta multa, or no me ponga esta multa. Okay, another instance when we say, por favor, so, por favor, you know, it's like when you had enough. And this is the same as in English, if you realize, sometimes we are so caught up in the language learning that we don't realize of the common sense of certain things. I have been there. So, por favor, these kids are so noisy. Por favor, estos niños son muy ruidosos. You know, it's like I had enough. This needs to stop. So, please, you know, por favor. So the two instances, so like a begging type. So please, please don't do this or por favor. Okay. Now, what are the alternatives to por favor in Spanish? So, in Spanish culture, our smile is our por favor in many instances, okay? So, from zero to ten, the use of a smile to say por favor will be 20 points, all right? So, un café? smiling and that's our por favor okay but there is more to this so please stay until the end of the video because we're gonna go through some examples that are super useful and they're gonna help you communicate with your close family and friends when you are in spain to a different level so please stay to the end and also please write in comments if there is any funny situation that you have experienced whilst you know to do with etiquette i'm gonna do so many more videos on etiquette because i think this is very important all right so what was i saying there uh oh yeah so our smile so from zero to ten when we use our smile to say, por favor, at 20, yeah? In fact, you probably have realized that even the most miserable Spanish person in earth has a beautiful smile. <laughs> and that, the reason why that is, is because since we are little, we are trained to smile and to smile sincerely, you know? Like I have been uh, in the UK in a family situation when we were going to have a photo taken next to British and then some people for example will say oh show your teeth 
like when we were going to take the photo, have the photo taken, like show your teeth. And I remember thinking, oh, that doesn't make any sense to me, you know, because you can show your teeth in many ways. You can go like that, you can go like that. So it can be very uh, antinatural to show your teeth, you know. Whereas in Spain, since little, it's constant. It's like, oh, give us a smile to babies, you know, to little toddlers, oh, give us a smile. So for us, a smile is very, very important. So I would recommend get in front of that mirror, start smiling, and start practicing a sincere and generous smile, all right? And this will be your, por favor, your please in many occasions. Now, how many times we use por favor from zero to 10 in a standard situation? I will say two. I will give it two points maybe to when we say por favor, okay? So that's the explanation of when and when not to use por favor. So pretty much por favor is a begging thing or a oh my god, I had enough, yeah? For the rest of the occasions, a smile is very important and then we're gonna go to the alternative sentences. And the alternative sen sentences today that we're gonna see are gonna be, um, could you please pass me the, sal the salt at the table? Uh, the, could I please have a lift, you know? If you are going somewhere, or could I please have a lift to work? And then the third one will be how to order a latte in Spain, okay? In Spain. So for the purpose of um, simplicity again, I'm just gonna conjugate one of the verbs, which is the verb poder, which means can. And I am going to conjugate it in present for completeness and also in the conditional. But I am not going to do this just yet, okay? We are going to go with the sentences before. And then I'm going to conjugate the verbs later. And we are also going to speak about me. And then I am going to speak about us, like, you know, two or more people. And you will see what I mean in a second in the video. So, could you please pass me the salt? So you are there on the table with your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, the uncle, the auntie, everybody. <laughs> and then you want to say, could you please pass me the salt to your Spanish partner? So this is a very close relationship, right? So in that case, I will say, me pasas la sal? No, por favor. Me pasas la sal? And that is polite enough for someone that is very close to you your partner, okay? Now, imagine if it's the cousin, like a cousin, someone who is very young and very, like, you know, um, happy, you know, and very, like, bubbly. Again, to that person, you could say, me pasas la sal? You don't need anything else. Just a smile, okay? So, me pasas la sal? The translation is, could you pass me the salt? So, me pasas? Me is the me, Okay, but we put it in front, so me pasas, and la sal, and obviously la sal is the salt. If you realize we didn't say, could you please, so we just say, pass me the salt, which in English language is rude, consider as very rude, yeah? But in Spanish, with a smile and a friendly attitude, is absolutely correct and polite as well, okay? Different uh, cultures have different politeness rules. Uh, now, imagine, for example, if you are going to say this to your father-in-law, who is a little bit older than you, and you want to show respect. I will say, me pasa la sal? So that's the usted, okay? Me pasa la sal? And I smile again. So all we've done is just to take out the final S of the verb. So from me pasas la sal to your partner or me pasa la sal to the usted, okay? That third person who is, you know, you want to show respect. You could add in this second instance, por favor. When we use por favor, we use por favor at the very end of the sentence. So in a way that is already implying how it's really not very important to us. And also it's a mumbling, mumbling. <laughs> a mumbling, por favor, yeah? So we don't say, 
por favor, we don't go por favor and we really pronounce that. We say, ¿me pasas la sal, por favor? <laughs> so this is how we say, okay, let's practice this because we are in family and let's practice this out loud here in this like very safe environment. So then when you are out there, you can like smash it. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm gonna say and then you say after me, okay? So, ¿me pasas la sal? No, sorry, we're gonna go with the usted, okay? So, ¿me pasa la sal, por favor? ¿Me pasa la sal, por favor? To your partner. ¿Me pasas la sal, por favor? ¿Me pasas la sal, por favor? Have you noticed it's por favor? Um, the meaning of por favor, so favor, as, uh, as you got it written down here, is the equivalent of favor. Okay, so favor for us, like could you do me a favor, will be me, da, me haces un favor. So it's the same word to say please. So it's like, can I have the favor of you passing me the salt, basically, okay? That's the literal translation of it. So, recapping. For someone that is very close to you, me pasas la sal. For someone who you want, you want to show respect, extra respect, me pasa la sal, por favor. The por favor is mumbling and it's really fast. You don't even you don't have to pronounce it properly, okay? Just por favor. Something that sounds similar will do the job. <laughs> oh, I love this video because it's so important, I think. I have um I come from Alicante and I have sometimes really felt the pain of hearing someone who was British and was trying to order at a bar and they started with the word por favor and they were trying to like pronounce it really well because in, a, in English language is very important. So that was like por favor and then before even they order and I, I, I felt like oh there is this person could really do with knowing that that is not really necessary and that is actually contraproductive for the communication, you know. Um, it, it doesn't really matter how you sound or anything like that because, you know, I think when we are learning a language, we need to just accept that for a little while things are going to be a little bit clunky. That's, that's life for people like us who are international and are aiming to speak different languages, okay? But yes, I just, I just think that this video is very important. And, and thank you and congratulations for staying listening to this. Uh, okay, so that is the first sentence. So, could you pass me the salt? Could you pass me salt? Now, another level of politeness is using the conditional of the verb poder, like can, okay? Now, um, similarly to English language, if you say, can you pass me the salt? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little bit off. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll pass you the song, no problem. Yes, but could you please ask me better? <laughs> and it's the same in Spanish. If I say to my sister, me, me pasas, eh, pasame la sal, me puedes pasar la sal. Sorry, I go like language disconnections. If I say to my sister, me puedes pasar la sal? <laughs> She'll be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> because me puedes as can you sounds a little bit abrupt, okay? So what we use in this instance is the conditional in the same as in English. So in English, if you say, could you pass me the salt? Doesn't have the please, it's a bit fun funny, but it still does the job. So... In Spanish, without the por favor, it's the same. ¿Podrías pasarme la sal? Brilliant job. I'll repeat this again, and you got it written down here. ¿Podrías pasarme la sal? And then if you want to, like, finish off on the fine line, then you can add the por favor, as we said, mumbling and fast. It's super fast. So... ¿Me podrías pasar la sal, por favor? ¿Ya? Yeah, ¿Sí da? ¿Me podrías pasar la sal, por favor? Now, repeat with me, please. I'm going to say it and then I'll wait for you. ¿Me podrías pasar la sal, por favor? 
Now, the pronunciation of podrías, podrías, is a tricky pronunciation for British, uh, you know, British uh, national, like locals. So this is the same, the similar pronunciation to Adrian, yes? But without the A, right? So, and without the N also, okay? So Adrian without A and without N. So imagine A, but we don't say that, then Dria, okay? When you say Adrian, so just say without A and without N, Dria. Dria, yeah, so that's super close to the pronunciation in Spanish. Dria, okay, like Adrian, Dria, all right, and then you need to put a po before. So, me podrías, for someone close, me podrías pasar la sal, por favor. Now, if it's someone that you want to show extra respect, like your mother-in-law, you will say, you take out the S then, and then it's, me podría pasar la sal, por favor. Honestly, if you say that to your mother-in-law, you're going straight to heaven. <laughs> In her account. <laughs> so try this, please try this, and then please write in comments, how did it go for you, okay? All right, so to recap, so... Me pasas la sal, simple. Me pasa la sal, formal. Me podrías pasar la sal, informal but quite good. Formal and really good. Me podría pasar la sal. And then if you want to finish off any of these like on a high, I'm going to do the last one just. Me podría pasar la sal, por favor with the por favor fast and sharp, well done, we're learning so much, I'm so happy, all right, so this is for passing the salt, the salt, okay, now let's have a look at, can I have a lift please, <laughs> okay, so imagine that your partner is going to somewhere or you want to have a lift from your partner to your work in Spain, okay, and your Spanish partner, then you could say, me llevas al trabajo? Simple, that's the simple one. Me llevas al trabajo? So, llevar is the verb for to take. It's like, could you take me to work? But we don't use the could you. Again, it's like, take me to work, which in English sounds rude, but in Spanish is not, okay? So, again, me llevas al trabajo? Now, imagine you're gonna say that to someone, again, the mother-in-law, the father-in-law. Me lleva al trabajo? In this occasion, sometimes you could add for extra politeness uh, de usted. It reinforces, because you're asking for something, it reinforces the, you know, the positioning. Like you put them as more respectful, you know because they're gonna take you to work and also, you know, saying por favor, and they are older than you. So, I'm gonna say this for you to hear it, okay? So, it will be, ¿Me podría usted llevar al trabajo? That is class, okay? Now, if you want to say the por favor, you could, but again, at the very end, I'm very sharp, yeah? So, that will sound like the following. So I will say that adding the por favor will be once you have the sentence and the control, then you add the por favor. It's like a, another level, right? But without the por favor, it's brilliant equally, okay? So let's do this. Uh, ¿Me podría usted llevar al trabajo? Okay, ¿me podría usted llevar al trabajo? All right, so that's fantastic. Now, similarly to the sentences before, uh, oh, no, 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 sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, another one will be instead of imagine, for example, that uh, your partner is going to drive to town and then you want to go to the gym. So you could say, me acercas al gimnasio? 
me acercas. So, acercar is to get, to, to get close, you know, to get close. But because you are saying me acercas, it's like, could you get me close to the gym? Yeah? Or could you, in a way, the, the, the correct translation will be, could you leave me near by the gym? Sort of, yeah? So, again, the same structure of sentence. It's all the same, it's repetitive, okay? So, me acercas al trabajo to your partner, oh sorry, me acercas al gimnasio, to your partner, if he was a, a formal person, me acerca usted al gimnasio, because then it sounds much more formal, the other option is, me podrías acercar al gimnasio, to your partner, then for the formal, it'll be, me podría usted acercar al gimnasio, ¿ok? And then for all of these, if you want to add the por favor, that's optional at the very end and sharp as we said, ¿ok? I'm gonna say the last example. Me podría usted acercar al gimnasio, por favor? <laughs> Honestly, I really want you to try this on your father-in-law or on your mother-in-law and then tell me in comments how this worked. If you could see in their face, they were like super impressed and happy. I'm sure that is gonna work so well. So please give it a go. All right, so now how to order a latte, okay? Very similar. So imagine that you go to a cafe and you see this really young person who looks like 12 <laughs> and is there like serving coffees, you know. Then you can say, ¿me pones un café con leche? Okay, ¿me pones un café con leche? So you are speaking about you, yeah? like same as partner or the cousin that is very bubbly, all right? You need to be able to gather when to use the you. Basically, these people will show you distance. It'll be much older than you or it'll be a very luxurious environment, uh, very sophisticated when they are showing distance. Then you need to use the usted, right? So, ¿me pones un café con leche? For closeness. If it's a usted, all you have to do, remember, See if you remember what we have to do. Yes, you guessed it. So take out the S, yeah? So instead of me pones, will be me pone. Me pone un café? And similarly, you could go, me pone usted un café? If you say me pone usted, that'll be fantastic, all right? And then uh, you could add the por favor, equally or not, whatever you prefer. So, and then we have the conditional, which gives that extra length of politeness, yeah? It will be, uh, ¿me podrías poner un café? That will be for the close option. ¿Me podrías poner un café? And then for the formal option will be without the S. It'll be, ¿me podría poner usted un café? Brilliant. You could even say, ¿me podría poner un café? That's also good, yes? But if you put the usted there, it's reinforcing, it's brilliant, yeah? Very, very high politeness. And if you realize, we no used, por favor, yes? So, ¿me podría poner usted un café? Then you can add the por favor. I'll do the last one again, once again. I'm gonna say, and then you could repeat with me, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for you to repeat. So, ¿me podría poner usted un café, por favor? All right? So, if it's... Eh, latte, it will be café con leche, okay? So, café con leche. <laughs> okay, so, um, I'm going to just quickly to conjugate the verb eh, poder in conditional, so you have it, okay? In conditional will be, yo podría, tú podrías, él podría, nosotros podríamos, vosotros podríais, ellos podrían, okay? I'm going to repeat this. Please repeat with me so we get used to this, okay? Because we are in family, so just repeat and you, you get used to pronouncing this, okay? So I'm going to say and then wait a few seconds. So, yo podría... <laughs> so remember, adria, yeah? Remember the dria, dria from Adrian, dria, okay? So that's the sound. So again... Yo podría, tú podrías, 
él, ella, usted podría. Nosotros podríamos. Vosotros podríais. Ellos, ellas, ustedes podrían. ¿Ok? So for the nosotros and vosotros, obviously you could have nosotras and vosotras as well. ¿Ok? Um, now I'm going to conjugate the verb poder in present. ¿Ok? So which is the equivalent of I can, you can. ¿Ok? So yo puedo. Tú puedes. Él, ella, usted puede, nosotros o nosotras podemos, vosotros o vosotras podéis, ellos pueden, ¿ok? So, if you want, you can go back to the video just a few seconds and listen to that. I don't want to reinforce it because it's not really that important in this context, ¿ok? So, when I say, um, when I say podría o puedes When I said that, when I said puedes, could be a little bit off. Is the say is the equivalent in English of can I have a coffee or could I have a coffee? You know, so if you say can I have a coffee, is some from someone very close, and usually you say can I please have a coffee? But because in Spanish we don't put the please, then uh, puedes darme un café can sound a little bit funny. You say so it's podrías, all right? Okay, fantastic. So I hope that this helps. Um, And this is all for today. I cannot believe it. This video has been so quick. So yes, uh, be pra get practicing. I didn't say that if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe. So you'll be alerted of all the videos that I am uploading. As I always say, I wish you the very best. Don't forget that you're important, that you're significant, that you matter. Get communicating in Spanish. Comunícate en español. Y libérate. Y sube a otro nivel. Muchísimas gracias.